from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi folks and welcome back to Ropecast. We're here once again with Saul Rubin, our friend from New York City, famous guitar player. Check out his records, we'll uh, give you a few pointers um, later links. on, some links. But for now, Saul, um, we said last time, I wanted to talk to you about music terms. Um, not about the guitar that you have, but about ways to talk about music. And when I started with jazz music only a year ago, which was with you, I noticed that coming from folk and pop and rock music, guitar player or, or jazz players have a few different expressions. Um, for example, you talk about comping when you accompany. Right. Um, are there other terms that are very, but usually when you talk to rock musicians, are different from jazz musicians? Well, um, in jazz we play songs that often have a lot of a lot of different harmonies. Like rock, rock harmony tends to be a little bit simpler. Mm -hmm. Not all, some rock is very complex. What do you mean by harmony? Maybe you can... You know, like harmony, like a song. Okay. 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 So we have chords, chords, and we call them changes in jazz. We call them change. The changes are the harmony of the song. So the slang is changes. Mm -hmm. okay. So you know the changes to that song. So you don't say the chords to that right, song. Right, right. Say, do you know the changes, which is a slang for chords. Uh-huh. Also, there's this one very important thing that I've found is, is the way you play the chords. You can play it all over the neck. I mean, you know, your regular right. campfire guitarist, you tell them to play See, major, he will never ask where to play, he'll play it that way. Yeah, yeah. And what do you call the different ways that you... Well, you can play different inversions of the chord, different voicings. Voicings? A voicing, I could play C like this. Mm -hmm. I could play C like this. I could play C like this. Mm -hmm. Those are different voicings for C major. So voicings... Is, is the way you put your fingers yeah, on Yeah, the configuration. The fretboard? No, it's not to your fingers, because it's true on any instrument. The ah. voicing on a keyboard or, or guitar. The voicing is that you can either have a configuration like C or or okay. different voicings of ways of playing C major, different um, construction of the chord. Um. Major, I, I may have to explain, uh, that's Dua and minor is Moll in, in, uh, in German. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's one extra thing that I think all Germans need to learn. You, do you, did you know that B, B is, is, is in German B flat. is B flat? And B is H. Right, H. Oh, so you do know that. Well, I studied at conservatory composition, so I had to know some of the German and the Italian um, words, nomenclature for... Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. okay, so, so yes, that's I, how they, you Because yeah. in Bach, it's, a, it's something in B, B is actually B flat. Right, right. Uh, the other thing, raising the note, that's B sharp, B right? sharp, which will be C. Which is C, which yeah. doesn't exist, but yeah. It exists if you're <laughs> a very flat key, a very sharp key. Ah, okay. One last thing I found out um, that's special to jazz, it has a certain closed repertoire, or right. not really closed, but you know, songs that sort of everybody's supposed to oh, know. Oh, they call it standards. Standards. Um, like standard tunes, like standard, like it's a standard that everyone knows. Okay, because you don't have that with rock music. You, you know, you have yeah, you do. very well. Do you, you have do standards, you, yeah. Would you feel that there are standards? Well, you would have standards. You know, like, can we play, you know, All Right Now? Yeah. yeah That's a, a lot, you know, a lot of bands uh -huh. through the history of rock and roll have played that and it's considered a, ja a rock standard. Ah, okay. A lot of the Beatles tunes and the Stones, you know? Uh -huh. Like, you know... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk and talking women, a lot of... That's a that's a rock standard. Okay. Yeah. okay. But it, okay. but I think the word is 
comes from the jazz world standards. Mm -hmm. And these songs and, are... And, and they're collected in, in, a, in a book. A lot of times they'll have a books of standards, yeah. And there's also the other side of jazz standards where they're based on jazz forms like the blues, mm -hmm. or what they call rhythm changes, which is based on I Got Rhythm by George Gershwin. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of songs that have the same chord progression, the same changes or chord progression. Okay, okay. But I wanted to just get to that book. Um, I, I learned that there's a book called The Real Book. Right. It's a whole series. Right. Now one thing I haven't found out, and this would be the last question, why is it called The Real Book? Is there an unreal oh, book? Okay, that's a good question. Because when composers write a song, they have a publishing company. Yeah. And theoretically, when it's sold to the public, the publishing company is supposed to get some money and the, and, the, and the composer is supposed to get some money. But many times over the history they would put together books that were actually called fake books. Fake books. And they were called fake books because they're not licensed, they're illegal. So, so it's like a lot of times a fake book would be written by somebody who transcribed these songs and wrote them down on a page. And they called the fake book. But a bunch of guys in Berkeley, in Berkeley College in Boston many years ago decided to write a fake book and call it the real book. Oh. And it became the definitive fake book that everybody used for like many, many years. Mm -hmm. So it's called the real book, not the fake book, but it's still a fake book. Uh -huh. Because it's not licensed to the publishers. Uh -huh. It's okay. like illegal. Fake books have always been illegal. I heard the term fake book too, but I had also heard a story about um, fake. It's called fake book because reading it, you f you're faking to know the song <laughs> in a session. Uh, faking means that you don't really know the song, but yeah. you're playing it anyway and probably <laughs> playing it badly. <laughs> yeah. And But faking, on, on, when you learn a song on the bandstand, oh, let me hear what you just played, I'm going to try it next time. Okay. First time you'd be faking it because you really don't know it and you're probably True. making a lot of mistakes. Yeah, yeah. So when you're faking it, you're actually not really executing it. You're faking it. <laughs> that would be my case. The difference between a faker <laughs> and, and, a, and a doer is, you know, it's different right. to do than to fake. Right. Okay. But a lot of times we learn songs by trial and error. Uh -huh. Especially on the bandstand or at a jam session, somebody starts playing something, you listen to it. Let me hear the bass notes. Let me hear the chords. Oh, that's the melody. And then, and then it's kind of like, you're playing it without completely knowing it. It's like faking. Mm -hmm. right, but when right. people get really good I at this... I did that last night yeah. at the session, actually. They were playing with it. Well, but a lot, of time, yeah. <laughs> a lot of times faking means that you're like going through the motions of, of playing the song without really knowing it fully, fully okay. embracing it. It's better, obviously, you go and learn the song, mm -hmm. and then you're not faking it. You're actually playing the song. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, true enough. Which is why I will be back next year for this course. Yes. Promise. And thank you so much oh, for this welcome. interview. Oh, okay. Welcome. Take care and have Bye a good guys. trip to New York. Bye. Bye. Thank you. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.